Hi, I'm Scott, and today we're going to be working on shop lighting, where we turn dim to bright on Dad It Yourself. So here is my shop lighting. I have this string of LED shop lights that go down to this cord and plug in right here to that outlet using the hybrid technology, but if there's a power outage or something, I could actually put an 18-volt battery in there. And then I have these two fluorescent lights, this one here and this one over here that I have switched out. Those are LED bulbs in there. Those aren't fluorescent technically, um, but it's still way too dark in here. Um, I have this box here. I saw a video by Drew Fisher at Fisher Shop where he upgraded his shop and I used his affiliate link and I bought that. And there are 10 LED fixtures in there and I'm gonna try to put them in there. So these are from Sunco. I got them on Amazon and you can buy them in ones, fives, tens, twenties, different uh, quantities and you save a little bit as you buy more. And I will definitely have an affiliate link down in the description if you are interested in getting these for yourself. So here's what comes in the package. We got a couple of hooks, some drywall anchors with screws, some S hooks, a couple of pieces of chain. Here's the fixture with a standard 110 two prong outlet, two bulbs, and then the instructions. Okay, so here's my dilemma. Power. So I have these heaters here. I have one here and I have one over here on the other side and they are on separate 20 amp circuits. Now, if I do the math, these are 12 amps each and then the lights are three amps each. So I know I can hook at least three of these up to the same power receptacle, which is kind of right over there for this one, right there, I can't see it, there it is. Um, and run the heater with at least three of the fixtures. In the summer, no problem. Uh, I could just turn the heater off by pulling the pull string and I don't have the draw of the heater during the summertime. But in the winter, which is about four months of the year, sometimes five, I run these heaters in the shop just to keep it up to 60. But, so what I'm thinking I'm gonna do is this pack has 10, so I'm gonna put four on this one, four on that one, and then replace the two fluorescents in the middle of the shop with the LEDs. And so I can have lights on that'll come from the switch in the garage, and then I can use the heater switches to turn on the other ones to turn on all the lights for filming or when I'm working on projects. So what we're going to do is we're going to run an extension cord from this plug right here and I'm going to start plugging in fixtures and if I can get four plugged into that one without blowing the breaker, we're good. Alright, so I have the extension cord plugged in up on the heater. Here's the other end. And we're going to plug it in and turn the first one on. Okay. So far so good. And the one. So the instructions say you cannot plug more than four of these in together, which is weird because it comes with ten in the package. And as any of us who can do math, ten is not divisible by four. Well, there's the third one. Plug the last one in. Look at that. And the heater did not trip at all. So that tells me I can put four on each heater and then use the last two uh, to replace the two fixtures I have in here. And then I'll move those fixtures out into my main garage and use those to light there. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to put two on this one and two on that one and they'll connect to the heater. And then the one that connects to the light switch that will replace this fixture will be centered on this one. And then I have three matching joists here that I can do that. I can't use the two joists. Well, here's these three, one, two, three. I can't use these two up here because that one has the garage door opener and this one has just got too much on it. That's a garage door plug, the main outlet, and this outlet right here that I've set up is hooked up to my dust collection so when 
I turn on my dust collection, which is over there and controlled by that light switch right there, my dust uh, collector that I have yet to put in here will turn on as well. So we can call it luck or we can call it a design. The cord on this is just shy of five feet, about 58 inches. And my rafter spacing here is 48 inches. So the cord from this last light here will be able to reach all the way over to this light here. And then I can tack it on that one just for support. And then we'll come back over here and then plug in there. So technically power is gonna go from here to here to here to here and then back over to that fixture. Okay, so gotta take that fixture down and I gotta take my paint rods down. Let's get that taken care of. Make sure you turn off the power. Okay, so the old connection to the shop lights, the connection was made inside the fixture, which is okay. No big deal with that, uh, as long as it's enclosed. But because these aren't going to be enclosed now, I have to put in a box. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Get up here without killing myself. Okay, so before any of the armchair electricians start sending me hate mail uh, because I'm stabbing the wires instead of wrapping them around the screws. And that is a point of contention for some people. And I could see why. If this was a plug where stuff was getting plugged in and unplugged and plugged in and unplugged all the time, that would be a safety concern because these wires could pull out eventually. But honestly, this plug is going to get plugged in once and probably not unplugged again for years. So I see no need to go through the trouble of screwing it in around the ring, especially being way up here on a ladder. So instead of using the chains or the S-hooks or whatever, what I did is I drilled a quarter-inch hole at each end of the fixture, and I'm going to use a pocket hole screw to go right through there and screw it directly into the stud. These have a nice little notch in the back that'll saddle that stud really good.
before I take out these existing fixtures, I'm going to get a shot of to see the difference between the before and after. Having adequate lighting in the shop is at the top of my list when it comes to safety. Being able to see what you're doing, where you're doing it, is always a priority. If you have any suggestions, comments, or questions, put those down below. Speaking of comments, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. I've got some videos over here you may be interested in. Subscribe button's right over here. Thanks for watching. Dad it yourself.